the Travel Squad Podcast. We're four friends that grew up together in the same small town. We followed each other to San Diego, and now we adventure the world together. One passport stamp at a time. We're here to share our travel stories and inspire you to go on your own adventures. Even if it starts with your own backyard. I'm Jamal. Brittany. Kim. And I'm Dana. And And we're we're the the Travel Squad Squad Podcast. Podcast. So grab your ticket, your passport, and don't forget your travel insurance. And prepare for takeoff. Hello, fellow travelers. Hello. Hey, Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 33 of the Travel Squad podcast. Today, we're taking you with us to Bryce Canyon National Park. This was another one of our weekend trips, and we used Sin City as our jumping off point and spent most of the time on this weekend just amongst the beautiful orange and red rocks that is Bryce Canyon. This trip has been on the hiking bucket list for a long time. In fact, I booked this trip for us almost a year in advance. Bryce Canyon is located in Utah, and despite its name, geologically speaking, it's technically not even a canyon. It's very famous for its distinct geological structures called hoodoos. 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 Let's get into this episode. Let's start us off with some tips. Number one, wear sunscreen. This is super important because there is no shade in the canyon at all whatsoever. We were there in late April and I remember I got sunburned on the first day that we hiked. And the second day, I was trying to cover my shoulders because they were hurting from the sun. Yeah, definitely not a lot of trees to provide shade. And one thing to take into consideration, too, is Bryce is actually at a really high elevation of about 8,000, 9,000 feet at the rim of Bryce Canyon. So at that high altitude, you have greater sun exposure. So definitely want to take that sunscreen. Doesn't matter what time of year. For sure have it. Another tip is to visit in cooler months. The spring and the fall are the best times to visit. In the summer, it can be really hot because there is no shade from the sun. And even though the highs only reach into the 80s, when you're hiking in the arid desert and you have direct sunlight on you, you can definitely get sunburnt and have dehydration and whatnot. And in winter months, it snows in the canyon. So some of the trails are inaccessible during the winter months. Good tip. You should also know that the town of Bryce, as you can imagine completely revolves around this national park there's tons of visitors even when we went in april tons of visitors and they're all there for hiking in the national park all right so let's get into it so as kim said we did go in late april for a just quick weekend getaway so we all worked on friday and friday evening we took the last flight out from san diego to las vegas the party vegas, plane baby. It was the party plane. People were getting wild on there. <laughs> they really Except were. Except for the person who fucking farted. Was that you, Brittany? Brittany? No, it wasn't me. <laughs> Zaina? I mean, no, that was not me. I, would, <laughs> I, know. I would, You know what? I would have claimed it if it was me. But Dude. I don't know, man. Like with a fart like that, I guess they were kind of getting wild, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But before we got on the flight, it ended up getting delayed. So we got in later than we expected anyway. So that kind of sucked on it. But, you know. Anytime we have a late flight, it seems to get delayed. It, it was always does. does. Actually, they move the flight up. And then they move the flight back and then they move the flight up. Yeah, seriously. And then they finally moved it back to the late flight time. So we ended up getting in like, I think an hour or two later than we actually anticipated. Around 1230 in the morning, I think. Yeah, we were kind of not so happy about that because we knew we were going to start the next day with a super early morning. Mm -hmm. And Kim really wanted to go to Hakkasan Friday night. When do we not hit up Hakkasan when we're in Vegas? I thought that's our thing. (laughs) I was frustrated that the flight was late because that would mean a later arrival to Hakkasan. Yes. (laughs) We got there just when it got crazy. (laughs) (laughs) But no, after we landed, we picked up the rental car and we needed the rental car because Bryce Canyon, as I mentioned, is in Utah. It is about a four hour drive from Las Vegas. So we definitely did need that rental car in order to get there. And we flew into Vegas because there wasn't a closer airport to Bryce. That's right, right? Correct. Okay. Well, actually, I think the other 
airport alternative was Salt Lake City. No? Correct. And I think that would take five more minutes longer on the drive time. So by default, we chose Las Vegas. (laughs) Serious. Five minutes. (laughs) Yeah, serious. I also think it was cheaper to fly into Vegas from San Diego because from San Diego. You wanted to go to Hakazan. Let's be real. (laughs) So tell us about our hotel in Vegas, ladies. What did we do? We really didn't do much. We stayed at the Royal Resort in Las Vegas. We got to the hotel around 1 a.m. after picking up our rental car. It wasn't even on the strip. No, it wasn't. It was some some tiny little nothing hotel. It was good for the night that we needed it for, though. It didn't matter. It was a love hotel. Was it? I I booked the room for two queen beds, and we get in, and we ended up getting one king bed, and it had a living room with two pull-out couches. It looks like he upgraded us to a suite then. (laughs) Yeah, I think it was something weird. Like, we booked two beds, one room, and they gave us two rooms, one bed, but then it had two couches. So we all got our own little sleeping area and two bathrooms. And in two bathrooms, that's super important because we had to to close the door from mom and dad like don't come into our side (laughs) yeah because the farting was continuing on your side of the room i think that was you ladies on the plane i'm not even gonna lie and so we got to close the door and we kept that away from Brittany and i you know what you are defaming kim and i's good names (laughs) but the two bathrooms is very essential because the next morning on saturday we woke up hella early we woke up at like hella early 4 a.m. Oh, I didn't even sleep after coming home from Hakkasan. No. <laughs> Picked me up from the club. <laughs> We've done that before with you, Kim. Yeah, so we woke up really early around 4 a.m. to get ready. I think our goal was to leave by 5 o'clock, 5.30 at the absolute latest. And the drive to Bryce took four hours. And on top of that, going into Utah, they are in a different time zone. So we lost an hour because they are one hour ahead. The drive to Bryce, there's just not a lot to look at, but there are a lot of subways along the way. Just in case you're making this stop, there will be ample opportunities to get a sandwich. In fact, we stopped <laughs> at the first subway we saw because we thought, oh my gosh, the further we go into the park, we're not going to find any food. So let's get a subway sandwich now. So we did that. And as we continued, they became more and more rampant around us. I guess they love their subways out there. I'm honestly really surprised. It reminds me of when Brittany and I were in New Mexico and there were Sonics all over the place. It's really funny to go from state to state and just see what particular fast food is the most popular in an area. And I guess in Utah, Subway it is. Which was good for us because we need to fuel up before our hike. So we finally made it to the park and we started hiking around noon, which is very late for us. We usually start hiking like first thing in the morning, but because we had the four hour drive and we lost an hour on the way, we weren't able to start our hike until about noon. So this is Saturday and we hiked the Queen's Garden Trail to Peekaboo Loop. That was a nice trail. I liked that. It was so pretty. All of the orange rocks and the hoodoos, the views. We were taking so many pictures. It was beautiful. The hike is about eight miles round trip and it starts at the top of the rim. And again, Jamal had mentioned that the rim is at an elevation of 8,000 to 9,000 feet and the hike is down into the canyon and you start on the Queen's Garden Trail. And just so you guys have a little bit of background information, we parked at Sunset Trail. We weren't quite sure where to park and we actually stopped and asked these ladies like, hey, we're looking for this trail. Do you know where to park? And they said no. And then we saw them on the trail later. Do you guys remember that? I do. I do. They were, they either really didn't know or they were lying and didn't want to help us because they were on the same trail and we told them where (laughs) we were going. They were withholding information. I guess so. But yeah, sunset point parking lot. So we keep talking about the hoodoos and I'm sure most of you listening probably have no clue what a hoodoo (laughs) actually is. I've never heard of a hoodoo until we were on the trail and everyone was saying hoodoo, hoodoo. And I had no idea what you were talking about. (laughs) (laughs) So why don't you tell us, Mr. Historian? It's known for. Yeah. So hoodoos are really big, tall, thin spire rock formations that protrude from the bottom of the ground. So you could almost imagine them as being hundreds, if not thousands of little individual like stone spires just going up into the air. And they're formed by frost weathering. And what that actually is, is when water gets into the cracks within the rocks and freezes, when water freezes, it expands. And so when it expands, it breaks up the rock, then the ice melts itself and it starts the process over and over. And based off of 
the frost weathering, that's how we get these really tall spire formations of the hoodoos. And Bryce is known for the abundance of hoodoos in the park. They're actually more abundant in Bryce Canyon than anywhere else in the entire world. And the spires or the hoodoo formations range from about five feet to 150 feet. As you're listening to this episode, type in Bryce Canyon National Park to Google Images and look at what this looks like. You really need to put the picture with what we're describing because it's just vast orange rocks and then like towers of rocks up in the sky just everywhere though. It's so pretty. You really just have to see it to picture it. This is one of my favorite national parks that we've been to because prior to I was saying, oh yeah, I'm excited and I think it's going to be great, but I didn't really know what Bryce Canyon looked like or what it was. So when we were there, I kept saying that this is so much better than I thought it was going to be. And I remember you guys were laughing at me because you said, don't you say that to every trip, Zana? <laughs> yeah, but I feel like you really meant it this time. You know, like there's nothing to describe seeing all those hoodoos in person. It is so beautiful out there. Like it was just so much better than I thought it was going to be. This is my second favorite national park. What's, What's your, your first? first? Zion. Zion. Just what? very close by this one. Zion's my favorite too. It was really close. In fact, you can hear people on the trail talking about how they came from Zion and then just whipped That's over to That's true. Bryce. You can do this one and Zion. So you can make a whole weekend trip or, you know, extend it another day or two and hit all of one trip. Did you guys say your favorite national parks? Zion. Zion. What about you, Jamal? Zion is one of them. It's tough to pick a favorite, but Zion is definitely on my top three for sure. Uh, oh, I've never been to Zion. So maybe if I go, I'll change mine. Maybe. Is this one your your favorite? This one's my favorite. Oh, the right Grand now. Canyon's pretty grand too. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Why don't you tell us a little bit more about the hike that we did, Brittany? So we started on the Queen's Garden Trail. And like I said earlier, we started at the top of the rim and we descended down into the canyon. And it's called Queen's Garden Trail because at the end of this trail, there's actually like a little rock garden area where there is a rock formation that looks like Queen Victoria. Victoria, but we bypassed this and we continued on to a trail called Peekaboo Loop Trail. And I read in advance that you have to do this loop in a clockwise direction. Because the shapes of the rocks as you're hiking through create a peekaboo illusion. They're like tunnels that you can peekaboo through, hence the name. And the views are so pretty as you're peeking through these tunnel rock formations. You can see the orange hoodoos in the background and it just creates a perfect photo opportunity. This was a really, really cool hike for that specific reason. I loved how many times we came to different tunnels, going through the rock, through the mountain itself, and then you just see through it and it's the only area where you're going to come across shade pretty much so it's a nice little reprieve sometimes but you just see a beautiful tunnel from the trail you're at and then you see in brand new view so so beautiful but going back to what Brittany was saying about the queen gardens trail she was saying rock formations look like queen victoria it's specifically a hoodoo that looks like queen victoria so it looks like she has her little crown it looks like she has her shape to her that she's known for so really really interesting rock formation and it's not her bust it's like a standing queen victoria mm -hmm. full-blown statue yeah. made natural from rock and i know you might hear that and be like yeah how much does it really look like her but it does and you have to get at a certain angle too in order to see it although we didn't do it on our way down we did do it on our way back but like we were talking about on the peekaboo trail there was tons of tunnels with beautiful lookouts every time we saw a new tunnel we we're like oh we gotta take another picture we can get another picture of the landscape of ourselves of the squad and one other thing i want to mention is that in the middle of the two trails there's another popular trail called the Navajo Loop Trail. And this trail is very popular for a portion of the hike called Wall Street. But this portion was closed due to the recent snow and we were really sad we couldn't do it. In fact, we even thought like, should we do it? But then we saw a guy who did and his feet were soaked from all of the ice and the snow slush. So we decided not to. But if you guys want to go and you want to check out Wall Street, if it's a good time, Wall Street feels like a slot canyon because the walls are so high. And if you guys do do it, make sure that you tag us so we can see it at Travel Squad Podcast, okay? Yes, I would love to go back to Bryce specifically to do this. I was really bummed out that Wall Street was closed because, you know, Brittany and Kim 
sometimes are the ones to do a lot of the research for the national parks because they always want to find the good hikes. And I really didn't know what it was. And then once we were there and I was told we couldn't do it, I Googled the images afterwards and I was like, wow, this is actually really impressive. I'm really disappointed that we didn't get to do that. And so another squad tip. Squad tip. Squad tip. Is that a lot of the trails connect. So like I said, we hiked the Queen's Garden Trail, Topeakaboo Loop Trail, and the Navajo Loop Trail connects in between the two. So depending on how much hiking you want to do, you can find how to connect some of the trails together to make shorter or longer trails that would fit your needs. Because eight miles is not enough. No? (laughs) No. Well, I mean, that was the two combined. But if you wanted to do less or if you wanted to do the Queen's Garden to Navajo or just Navajo and Peekaboo. Had we started earlier, we could have added more on. I mean, we could have. Could have. I mean, we've done 16 before. (laughs) That's a reference to our Sequoia National Park episode. Where we literally walked 16 miles because we got lost or we hiked so on the hike there are so many people this was a really popular trail and you know what really took me by surprise were how many international tourists are there which is great but I feel like I've been to a lot of touristy places here in the United States but I've never seen so many international tourists and in fact you know most people on the trail were speaking French at one point I let a family pass me by you know since I was walking a little bit slower than them. And one of the guys looks at me and he said, merci. And so I looked at him and I said, de rien. (laughs) <laughs> and I was just like, wow. You know, what's really funny is I know a lot of foreign tour companies come to the United States and a lot of the places that they go are the national parks and very few when you go to them, you really see those tour buses, but it was really prevalent at Bryce, like really, really prevalent. And I think that just goes to show what Zaina was saying when she said she was really impressed by it and hearing us talking about it, how all of us really liked it. Bryce Canyon is something truly special. I really can't describe it articulately. You just have to see it to really understand why. And that goes to show why Kim was saying definitely Google the images so you can see Mm -hmm. and understand. Yeah. And for all of the families out there that are hiking with children, there were a lot of kids on the trail, either hiking themselves or their parents were carrying them on their backs. Jamal and I even made comments that like, that could be us someday carrying our kids around because I would definitely make Jamal carry our kid into a national park for sure. So all the brunt in is on me to carry the baby, huh? Well, after those nine months, of course, after those, (laughs) it's all right. I guess when you put it that way, it makes a lot more sense, but the baby's going to be heavier. You guys are going to have little rain. Ranger babies. Little ranger babies. Maybe, maybe so. We'll soon find out. But one thing I really do remember too, and this goes back to what Brittany was saying about how there's many trails, but they all connect and you can make loops out of them or out and backs, meaning one way and then come back the other. I think at one point we were asking somebody for directions and then they told it to us. And I was, I think, just tired from waking up early, getting in late the (laughs) night before, doing the hike, the drive. Yes. Thank you, Zaina. And the person had given me the answer. And then just in a daze, I said, oh, thank you, person. (laughs) (laughs) And everyone started to laugh. I think you said that you were going to say something else, but at the last minute you changed your mind and went with person. I I think person was to say, thanks, perfect. But you said (laughs) person. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like I said, just so tired from the hike and the drive and waking up early. I was just in a daze out there. But that stands out to me, that moment in particular, for whatever reason. Thought it was funny. By the way, thank you for driving. You're welcome. The squad appreciates it. Do Uh they? Because yes. all you guys do is pass out in the back. Don't bother to keep me entertained hey, these hey, days. Hey. We will give you some trivia I, here and there. I never fall asleep because I am busy taking pictures of the girls asleep in the back seat. That's Not true. I've true. gotten pictures so of you true. sleeping before. Okay. Let's get to the good part. Where did we stay? So we had originally, and by we, I mean me, booked a hotel at the Bryce Canyon Inn. And I booked this like a year in advance. Which is a good tip for all of you out there. Squad tip. If you're going to go to Bryce, book your hotel as early as possible because they do sell out. Like we said, it's very, very busy there. Yes, it is. So we go inside the lobby and the lady behind the desk tells me that she can't find the reservations. And I'm like, what? You can't find the reservations? I booked this like a year in advance. You must be mistaken. So she looks into the computer a little bit more and then she says, well, good news. I found your reservation. You're not staying here. We actually upgraded you to our sister hotel across the street. Upgrade. Upgrade. Free upgrade. 
So maybe that was a perk from booking so far in advance. So we stayed at the Best Western Plus Ruby Inn. And so we go across the street with our car, we check in and we're inside the lobby. We're about to get the keys. And the guy at the desk tells us that we're getting a free Free breakfast breakfast buffet. buffet. I love being a free breakfast buffet. Well, first off, a little context. Brittany and I were the only ones checking in. Kim and Zana were still outside in the car, just waiting in the back, being lazy as usual per oh, in the back Oh, seat. we just finished the eight-mile hike, by the way. I know, I know. I'm we, giving them a hard time. They told us to sit in the car and wait. No, we didn't. <laughs> yes, they did, because they told the front desk that they only booked for two people, so they were trying to hide us in the back. You're lying. <laughs> just kidding, guys. We, we always book for the appropriate amount of people. Because karma. But anyways, <laughs> so they're in the car. Jamal and I are again at the front desk and I get so excited that they've told us that we get a free breakfast buffet because at the other hotel, the Bryce Canyon Inn, they did not offer the free breakfast buffet. So as he's supposed to be handing us the key, I was just so excited. I run out because I'm distracted and I go to the car and I'm like, you guys, you guys, we're getting a free breakfast buffet. And they're all screaming and cheering and we're all happy. <laughs> and then the guy comes out of the hotel and he's like, you guys, forgot your key we were so excited that we forgot (laughs) our key to our room (laughs) for the breakfast buffet i love it it's all we need is a breakfast buffet we need a place to sleep so (laughs) so after we checked into the hotel we really didn't do much for the rest of the night after that big hike that we did about eight miles we all wanted to shower so we just did that and then even though we had a free breakfast buffet for the next day The hotel did have a dinner buffet and we looked at a lot of places in the area online to see if anything piqued our interest to eat, but we saw really good reviews for that dinner buffet at the hotel and we decided, what the hell, let's try it on for size. We're already here. We don't really want to move, so let's just eat at the dinner buffet. And how was it, ladies? We had to drive there because it was such a big parking lot. And our feet were so so sore. sore. Yeah, so even though it was in the hotel itself, it was just so big because, again, so many visitors go to Bryce that we didn't even want to walk from our room back to the lobby. It was just so long. I think it would have been, honestly, like half a mile to three quarters of a mile of a walk. (laughs) That's how big that hotel was. Also, it's a very big buffet. A lot of choices there, but the food, I mean, like all buffets, they're slightly disappointing. All the foods, I mean, not a breakfast buffet. Don't get me wrong. Those kill it. But dinner buffets? Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of buffets. I like how you distinguish that, Kim, because (laughs) I like buffets in general. Now... I love buffets and then after. I didn't think this one was, eh, was it the best buffet food? No, but for the price and what we got, I thought it was definitely decent enough to where I walked out satisfied. Yeah, and it also gets very busy. There'll be a line of people waiting to get in there. Yeah, I think we were so hungry that we went pretty early. But when we walked out, there was a line into the Crazy line. And when I walked out, I saw someone had ordered like a steak dinner meal and that looked really good. I kind of regretted getting the buffet. I was going to get something off of the menu, but then I saw that the buffet had the unlimited dessert. Ice cream, yes. That's what it was. It was an <laughs> ice cream bar. And as soon as I saw the ice cream bar, I was like, I'm in. I'm going to take the buffet. And I think we all ended up doing the buffet. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. I forgot to mention that they did have an a la carte menu that you could order from specifically, or you can choose the buffet. We all chose the buffet. So after dinner, like I said, we really didn't do too much. We were all really tired from, again, the early morning, the big hike and we knew that we had another big hike the next morning so we went to bed woke up bright and early but before we hit the trails we definitely hit up that free breakfast buffet breakfast buffet and ladies breakfast buffet tell me about this breakfast buffet breakfast buffet oh my god if you listened to our trailer there's a clip of me talking about the biscuits being dynamite this is the buffet the best (laughs) biscuits i've ever had I mean, I even almost passed, but then Jamal got up to get a biscuit. So I was like, fuck it, I'll get a biscuit. And it was so flaky, melt in your oh mouth. My God. I don't like, even like biscuits and gravy that much. This one was amazing. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, also just another throwback to the fact that there are so many visitors, especially international. Everyone at the breakfast buffet that morning was speaking French. If not French, another language. Yeah, pretty much French and German. And so it's just, uh, like I said, it's just, I've been to so many touristy places, but I've never seen seen so many international people, which was really, really cool. 
What an interesting disparity, though. You ladies didn't really like the buffet dinner from the same restaurant, but yet the breakfast was just dynamite, which it really, really was. Super, super good. Well, the highlight being the biscuits and gravy. They also had eggs, sausages, potatoes, you know, all of the normal oatmeal. breakfast things, oatmeal, No cereals. waffle maker, though. That no. was unfortunate. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I usually do judge a breakfast buffet by the fact of if they do have a waffle maker. This one did not, but everything else was so superb that I was able to let the waffle maker slide. I yes. liked their oatmeal a lot. It was pretty good. So after breakfast, squad tip, if you're hiking early in the morning, use the bathroom while you're here before heading out to the trails. Yeah, I learned this one the hard way. Apparently, we had just got done with breakfast. We're like, okay, let's go get to the trail and... All of a sudden, once we got to the trail, I was like, you know, this is going to be another eight mile one. I felt like I had to go. So I told the ladies, hey, hold up. You know, I'm going to use the restroom here at the trailhead. Luckily, they did have a restroom. But unfortunately, we were there so early that the restrooms were not open at that time. I don't think they opened until eight o'clock. So we got a little bit later of a start to the hike because I made the ladies go back to the hotel so that I could specifically go use the restroom. Hey, yeah. man, <laughs> gotta do, do it. what you got to do. Do it before you get on the eight mile trail. You yes. know, you broke NSOT when we were in Death Valley. So you should have just drop trial and done no, your business. I, I, no, 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 not at all. There, there was a restroom nearby and, you know, I like to think of myself as a civilized person. That's in uh -huh. worst case scenario, Ken. Uh -huh. We weren't in worst case scenario at that point. Because there were bathrooms at the trailhead. They just weren't accessible at the hour we were there. So 8 a.m., you can use the restroom there. Otherwise, you're going to have to do it at the hotel. Which is what I did. After Jamal used the bathroom, we headed back to the trailhead. We parked at Sunset Point again, where we had parked the previous day. But this time we were going to hike Fairyland Loop Trail. And this trail is a big, long loop. It's not any trail that connects together to another one. It's just one really long one. And you start at the rim and the rim is 8,000 to 9,000 feet in elevation. And you hike about 900 feet into the valley. And you're hiking amongst the hoodoos and the deep stone canyons and it's so beautiful you see the orange reds and there's even pink white and tan colors that you see along the way yeah this one was a really really cool hike i didn't know what i was really going to be getting into on this one all i know was from Brittany that it was a big giant loop and it started at one point at the rim you go down into the mountain and then hike up out of the rim on another side. And this was just so impressive. I mean, so beautiful. You think you saw enough of the hoodoos the day before. You definitely didn't, or we definitely didn't. It's just still as impressive. And here it was really cool because on this trail in particular, I feel like you were more immersed into them than on the trail that we did the day before. We got far off views, but here on the Fairyland Loop Trail, we were in amongst them. Yeah, there were parts where the rocks almost made like windows. We have some pictures of like us peeking through these windows through the rocks and you look like a little speck because they're so massive. That's one of the things I love about national parks is you feel so small, yeah. but surrounded by all that nature. Yeah, and so just another reminder that as far down as you descend, you have to ascend back onto the rim again. So just keep that in mind. And what goes in must come out. That yeah. is true. And there was also a little branch off hike that we did. It was called the Tower Bridge Trail. And it did come off of this main trail and it got us to a structure that looked like Tower Bridge, if anyone's familiar with that. Yeah, Tower Bridge in London, famous icon. A lot of people actually think Tower Bridge is London Bridge because London Bridge is famous, at least the name, but that's not true. Tower Bridge. So there was another hoodoo formation that looked like Tower Bridge. I guess Bryce National Park really loves all things British, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> no wonder there's so many international tourists. I guess Yes, that's true. <laughs> Never thought about it that way. And because this trail is a loop trail, you can do it clockwise or counterclockwise. There's not any rules in which direction you have to hike this trail. We decided to do the loop counterclockwise because we read a tip that the climb out is easier this way. And since we had hiked eight miles the day before as well, we were like, let's have an easy day, guys. I remember descending too, thinking to myself, oh my gosh, we're going to have to come up this. Mm -hmm. So I can only imagine coming up the way that we went down. Yeah, I definitely definitely 
think that the way we came out was a lot easier than just remembering how it was going down. I thought the same thing. I was like, man, if it's anything like this on the other side going out, we're in for it. But it was a lot more mild. Not to say that it was easy, but definitely a lot more doable for sure. And there was a lot less people on this trail. We really didn't see a lot of people when we were down into the canyon area. There were more people on the rim. And then when we were finishing, there were people starting the hike. But on the trail itself, it was just us for a long portion of it versus the previous day on the Queens Garden Trail and on the Peekaboo Loop Trail, it was pretty crowded. And also we started a lot later on Saturday. Even 8 a.m. is kind of a bit late for us, but when we start early like that, you can get more of the trails to yourself. Mm -hmm. I thoroughly enjoyed this hike because one, it was challenging, but two, it wasn't anything crazy. And then we did have it by ourselves as the ladies have already said, but I don't know. I just, I really thought this one was a fun one. So if you do do this trail, it's going to take about four hours approximately so just keep that in mind yeah so after the trail we headed back to Sin City, Vegas. Las Vegas. Vegas, baby. Because we had to hit up Hakkasan again. We had to hit up Hakkasan again. <laughs> <laughs> but no, just keep in mind, again, this was another weekend getaway. So our plan was to fly Monday morning back to San Diego. So after our hike here on Sunday, we drove back to Las Vegas and we had ourselves a hotel at the Stratosphere where we just made base camp for the remainder of the night. Chosen for its affordability, not its it's style and class. That's true. It's one, it's, it's one of the very few places that still has free parking on the Las Vegas Strip. So we take all those things into consideration. And again, when we travel in particular, we're not saying we're going to stay in dumps, but we don't particularly need anything fancy schmancy because we're always looking to save a buck. And on top of that, we're really going to be out of the hotel most of the time. It's just a place to sleep. Mm -hmm. By the time we got to the hotel, we just needed to shower and then leave so we can go get dinner because we were super hungry. One of our favorite Favorite restaurants one of your Vegas. favorite restaurants, Kim. I'm just <laughs> kidding. I like this one, but I'm sure our listeners, if they know you and pay attention, can guess what you suggested to eat. Thai food, of course. <laughs> I thought you were going to say shrimp. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the Thai place called? It's called Le Thai, and it's in downtown Las Vegas. So it's right near the Fremont Street Experience. And it's more residential, so it's easy to find parking. The prices are affordable, and the food is really good. If you like spicy. It was super spicy <laughs> this time. Yeah. I mean, we've been there before together, and I don't feel like it was spicy in the past. But I think I just got like a three or something like that. And it was very, very spicy. Yes. I got, I think I got a curry and it was the spiciest thing I've ever eaten. I was like fanning my mouth, drinking water. It was so hot. The guy saw me actually and gave me the tip that if you squeeze lime onto it, it cools down the spice, which I didn't know up until this point, but it really did work. And it was great after that. Wait, have you guys actually been here before? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I thought you guys were just joking around and you know it's Thai so Kim of course suggested Thai. no no we've been here before <laughs> with Kim when you didn't come with us but to we Zion. went to Zion National oh. Park because again Zion's in Utah so we used it Vegas again as base camp time. yes it was <laughs> And it was delicious, but I don't know if it's we're just getting older, if they're getting new chefs, hey, hey, if hey. we're getting spice intolerant. I don't know. <laughs> spice it, intolerant. It was definitely really, really hot. But I just don't want to move on from talking about Thai food until we mention how big of a crush Kim had on our waiter. I did not. She was already <laughs> was impressed with him. And then he gave that lime tip. And all of a sudden, she was just swooning even more. See, you flirt a little and you get the tips on how to cool down your spice. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. That's funny. So after dinner, we headed out to Hawk Sun before heading to bed. <laughs> I just want to throw it. I'm sure all of you guys can tell. We never really go to Hakkasan. I well, I know you've Hakkasan. been, but when we say we go to Hakkasan, I just want to reiterate that. Yeah, it's, a, it's an Hakkasan. inside joke that we explain. What episode do we talk about that in? Well, you can go to www.travelsquadpodcast.com and click on the tab for squad lingo and you'll be able to find it there. Nice. Yeah. That's a new feature on our website. Woo woo. Mm -hmm. woo, -woo. So we flew back to San Diego bright and early Monday morning. I just want to say that, yeah, we did. But we probably could have flown home Sunday night and we were even talking about how awesome it would have been if we had flown home Sunday night, but we didn't know what the traffic was going to look like or anything like that. And it's much better to play it safe than to be sorry. But in hindsight, we totally could have flown home Sunday night. But I agree. 
but you never know. We yeah. often choose the Monday morning because it's cheaper to fly super early Monday morning than it is to fly home on a Sunday night. I also feel like if we did choose to fly home Sunday night, something would have happened. So yeah, risk it. <laughs> roll your own dice. You make your decisions. But yeah. We flew home Monday. So the whole plan was to be able to leave early enough Monday morning to make it back for work. And again, we've talked about this many times on the Travel Squad podcast on how to make the most of your week and getaways, little trips. And that's one of our little tidbits that we do is to tough it out and make it to work on Monday morning. So we woke up super early early, had to return the rental car, had a flight home, and all of us managed to make it to work just on time. And I just want to say, I know a lot of people who told me afterwards, like, oh my gosh, I've always wanted to go to Bryce Canyon, or that's on my bucket list. And we didn't take any time off work, guys. Like, it's very easy. It's very manageable. And I'm not one of those people who's saying, I wish I could go. I did it on a weekend. It's jam-packed, fun, and filled, but you can do it. Yeah, I even had been on a trip to Italy, and had gotten back the day before we went on this weekend trip due to my excellent planning skills. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. So I really made it work. And Jamal and I had three w- weekends in a row where we were going to be out of town. So it was like back to back to back. And this was one of them. So don't make the excuse that you're too busy. We were all working full time. We were all traveling in the downtime. So whatever you have to do to make it work for you, make it work. And make we say that work. not to shame you, but to encourage you. Work it, work it. Get out. <laughs> All right. Is it time? I think it's time. For questions of the week. <laughs> questions of the week. <laughs> questions of the week. Questions of the week. Questions of the week. All right. So we're going to get right to them. (laughs) Our first question is from Lloyd C. from Providence, Rhode Island. Thank you, Lloyd, for connecting with us. What's up, Lloyd? And he asks us, how do you select your hikes? So it's really easy. Kim and I take charge of this, really. I typically take a look at the National Park System trails and all trails and also look at some blocks and see Mm -hmm. what are the hikes that keep coming up on all of the websites, including like mileage, what to expect on the hike and what you're going to see. So I just kind of pick a few and then I go back and look at pictures and then I text Kim, hey, what do you think of these hikes? And then she helps me narrow them down. Yeah, I like to see pictures of what the hike's going to look like. And I also Google like moderate or difficult hikes because I don't want to do some little hike that's not hard. You don't want an easy day? No. Especially after filling up at a breakfast buffet. The only time that we really do easy hikes is when they are scenic hikes where they're recommended by the national park to say, okay, you know, these hikes are more so little baby trails, but you get really good views of certain things and it's really recommended to do. But I just want to go back to what Brittany was saying when she said she looks at all trails. All trails is a specific website that is specifically dedicated to hiking and it talks about what to expect on the trail, the mileage. So that's a very good resource tool. But I think before she gets to that, she usually looks at the National Park website to figure out trails that they have there, what they say, and then really get user reviews from all trails. Yeah, I don't love the National Parks website. No, I don't They aren't that great. All trails is amazing because there's so much UGC. You'll have people commenting saying, I just did this hike last weekend and it was snowing or whatever else. And they put their own pictures up. And they put their pictures up. It also tells you what time of year to hike it in. So it'll say like- If dogs are allowed- Yeah, it's best in, you know, summer months or fall months or whatever the case may be. But I love all trails. And that's one of the resources I use to help plan the trails. What about you, Zena? I show up. (laughs) I show up Lloyd C. (laughs) That's what I do. (laughs) She has no idea what she's doing until she's on the trail. Or until Kim posts the story of what she packed. (laughs) All right. So our next question is from Corinne from Miami. What did she ask, Kim? She asked a good question for you and Zaina. What do you do about going to the bathroom on the trail? Well, I want to say this is a good question for all of us or anybody who is a hiker. It's just unfortunate that Zaina and I are the ones who <laughs> have firsthand stories about this, but it could be anybody. I but- have popped a squat on the trail to urinate, but never number two. So you say. I don't know if I believe that or not. One time that was a long squat for a pee, Kim. No. <laughs> no, no. So- 
at the end of the day, like you got to do you, right? So just make sure that you have hand sanitizer, bring baby wipes. A lot of times, like I bring just even Clorox wipes to wipe down my my seat on an airplane and put it in a little plastic bag. So if you want toilet paper, if you want baby wipes, put it in a little plastic bag, put it in your backpack, have another bag that you can put your trash in. But essentially, I mean, if you have to go, you have to go and someone is going to be on the lookout. I mean, hopefully you have someone to be on the lookout for you and uh, do your thing or hold it. And good tip, Zena, make sure to pack whatever you bring into the area out. So if you're using the wipes, don't be that person and leave them there. Put them in a plastic baggie and dispose of it accordingly. And if it is number two, make sure that, you know, just cover it with some leaves, bury it, do what you got to do. Pretend you're a feline. Is that what you guys did when you (laughs) shat on the trail? (laughs) I don't like that term that you used, Kim. That sounds a little grotesque, but yes, I had had, had the courtesy (laughs) to cover it up. I think Xana did too. Mm -hmm. Good tip. Thank you, Corinne, for that wonderful question. (laughs) Any last thoughts on Bryce Canyon in general, guys? You just have to go. I want to go back to what Zaina was saying on, again, doing it on the weekend and don't make excuses. Yes, we're talking about wanting to go back because there is more stuff to do, but you'll regret not doing just a little bit versus being picky and say, oh, I can't do all that I want to do during this amount of time, so I don't want to go at all. Don't be that person. Pick your highlights and make it happen. Thank you all so much for tuning into this week's episode. Keep the adventures going with us by following us on Instagram at Travel Squad Podcast and tag us in all of your adventures and send us in those questions of the week too. You know, we love that. And if you found the information in this episode to be useful or you thought we were just plain funny, please share it with a friend that would enjoy it too. Please subscribe, rate and review our podcast and tune in every Travel Tuesday for new episodes. Stay tuned for next week's episode. We are sharing our tips and tricks on how to pack like a pro traveler. Squat to. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.